let's talk about re-exposures to wheat and grain once you've been free of wheat and grains for at least a few weeks. So let's say you've done well, you're, you're losing weight, you've reversed inflammation, maybe you've gotten rid of acid reflux and fibromyalgia symptoms, maybe you're on your way to getting rid of an autoimmune condition, your blood sugars are dropping, you're losing weight, etc. But let's say you've been re-exposed. That re-exposure can be intentional. Say uh, you're at your daughter's birthday party and there's a birthday cake and you say, well, what the heck, I'm just going to take a few bites of birthday cake. A little bit can't hurt, right? Or maybe it's unintentional. Maybe you're at a restaurant and you didn't realize that the gravy or the roux was thickened with wheat flour or cornstarch and you have a re-exposure, what I called in an old Wheat Belly blog post, deja vu. <laughs> So re-exposures are very serious. So this is why we work so hard to avoid them. So if you had a re-exposure to anything made of wheat or gluten, I'm sorry, wheat or grains, you can have mind fog, anger, anxiety, and other mental or emotional effects, gastrointestinal distress, typically bloating, diarrhea, even abdominal pain. I've even seen people go to the emergency room with abdominal pain, they thought it was appendicitis or something terrible like that. It was nothing more than grain re-exposure. It can cause a return of joint pains or migraine headaches, leg edema. If you were relieved of any kind of health problem with grain elimination, it typically comes back with re-exposure. So if you had, for instance, irritable bowel syndrome symptoms relieved, they'll come back. If you had uh, uh, very terrible headaches or a skin rash, it can come back. Now, the worst case scenario is if you had some kind of autoimmune condition that reversed, like let's say the pain and swelling in your fingers and wrists of rheumatoid arthritis, and maybe it took you a year or a year and a half or two years even to get off your drugs and your fingers and now feel better, they're no longer swollen uh, or painful, and you have a re-exposure with an hours, you're right back where you started and you'll have to go back in the medications. And it can take you months to get back to where you were and get relief again. So re-exposures can be very serious business. It could be as little as diarrhea, bloating, and abdominal pain that lasts only 24 hours. It could be suicidal thoughts and depression that lasts for a week. It could be joint pain, swelling, and a flare-up of some kind of gastrointestinal inflammation that lasts months, but recognize that any kind of re-exposure can be very serious. And this is why we work very hard to remain grain-free once we are grain-free. So be on the lookout. Always check your, your, your ingredient lists on any kind of food you buy. As you know, the best food are the foods with no ingredient lists or labels, right? Like vegetables and fruit and um, meats and and, and fish and poultry uh, or olive oil, things don't have nothing besides that one ingredient in them. But if you do choose to buy a food that has more than one ingredient or is processed by a food manufacturer, always very carefully check that ingredient list and you look for uh, any kind of grain um, ingredient and you avoid it if it contains anything or even anything in question. And likewise in restaurants, be very careful. It's gotten a lot easier, I'll tell you that. When I first wrote the first Wheat Belly book, it was tricky trying to figure out at a restaurant if something had grains in it and sometimes you got re-exposed. It's gotten so much easier now that so many of us are doing this and most wait staff, even chefs, uh, will sometimes get involved to be sure that you're not re-exposed, to help you do this.